Hey guys, this is C Plus Hacker. My name is Taylor and I'm going to take you on an awesome adventure uh, through this course of web development for those of you who are not programmers. Um, now, if you are a programmer and maybe you're just new to web development, um, I'm sure that you can benefit from this course, but it's meant especially for those who have never touched code in their life, but they wanna build websites. I'm going to show you how we're gonna start today and we're just going to start from scratch. I want to make it as simple as possible and I don't want to waste your time. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is download one program. Now I know a lot of tutorials will have you download a bunch of software before you get started. This is going to be one little program and it is going to just make your life so much easier. So go to Google and type in VS Code stands for Visual Studio Code. It's a program by Microsoft and it's awesome. I highly recommend it. Now you can, you can do, um, you can code websites in Notepad if you want, but I do not recommend that. This program is going to help you so much and I'm gonna show you how. So go to here, it's code.visualstudio.com. Download for whatever operating system you're on. It's on Mac, it's on Windows, it's on Linux. Uh, just download the latest stable build. Um, and once you've got that installed and you pull it up, it's going to look something like this. Okay. You're going to see this welcome page. Okay. Um, you might see this on the side. I don't know. Um, yeah, let's just, let's get started. So the first thing we'll want to do is we want to create a new folder. So we need a project folder where we're going to store all the files for our website. Um, and there's not that many files um, in the beginning, so <laughs> don't worry. So let's go ahead and click, uh, oh, oh, sorry, not open file. Let's go to open folder. Now you can choose any location, um, but I've got a special location for my projects. Okay, so I'm going to go to my personal projects folder. I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call this, um, let's see, web design for non programmers. Okay. <laughs> you can call yours whatever you want. Um, so just open up that folder. And uh, this is a relatively new feature in this program where it just kind of asks if you trust the creators of whatever files you're opening, just say yes, you trust them. It shouldn't ask you again for that folder. Um, great, so go ahead and close this welcome window. Okay, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna change this name later. It's a little lengthy. Um, actually, let, let's go ahead and, and do that now. Um, we're going to change that to, we're just going to call it new website. Now, if you'll notice what I did right here is something that is called camel case, and you don't really have to worry about it right now. You can name your website, whatever you want, but it's just a syntax that's kind of used in programming where the first word is lowercase and the rest of the words are have the first capital letter. Um, I'm just used to it because um, I do a lot of programming, but really you can name it whatever you want. We'll use this um, in, in a while when we learn some JavaScript um, to make our websites interactive, but you really don't have to worry about it. Now, so don't worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and click this refresh button right here. Um, it looks like it did not like that. Okay, sorry, we're gonna open the folder again um, just because we changed the name and so it got mad at us. And again, yeah, we trust it. Um, okay, the first thing you'll wanna do, now, don't worry about all the, the buttons on the side, the menus at the top. We're gonna, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know, okay? And I'm just going to show you the most useful features, the ones that will really matter to you. The first thing I want to do is come over here and click this new button 
uh, or this this button with the little page it's going to create a new file okay now I want to make this experience as easy as possible but I also want to teach you good uh, practice best practices I want to teach you how to how to be a real programmer while you're doing this um, because you can be a brand new you can be a beginner be, brand new programmer um, but I want to teach you how to be a good programmer and how to do it easily. Okay. Programming doesn't have to be super hard, but anyway, back to this. So what we want to do is we want to call this index.html and press enter. The reason we do that is because your web browser is going to open up your HTML files. HTML is the kind of the main language we use for writing our websites. It kind of creates the structure of the site. And your web browser automatically searches for a file called index.html. So this is going to be the first file that your that is opened in the web browser. So that's why we name it that. Now we name it .html because that's the extension HTML. And it's it tells the computer that we're writing an HTML file. Um, we're going to use two other languages later on called CSS and JavaScript. And so those would be uh, your file name .css or .js for JavaScript. But this one is, is index.html. Okay. Now, as you can see in Visual Studio Code or VS Code, um, over here, we've got our web or our, our file browser. Okay. Um, this is going to show all of our files, folders, anything we have. Um, some other basic features, we've got search, this will kind of search your whole project. You don't need to worry about any of these other buttons right now. Um, we'll look at some useful extensions later on. Um, actually, it might be a good idea to get an extension right now just to help you. Click on this extensions button and type in HTML at the top. Okay. And, um, oh. I apologize. I thought I was using an extension, but it looks like I'm not. Okay. I, I believe HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are um, have built in extensions. The extensions basically just make it so that when you're typing code, it will make suggestions for you and it will color code color code your code um, to make it kind of easier to understand. But it looks like it's built in, so just ignore everything I just said. Let's start writing this file. The first thing you'll want to do is press is type HTML and press tab. What this just did is it created an opening HTML tag and a closing HTML tag. So in HTML, we use what are called tags, where they're these, they've got these carrots and then the name of the tag, that's an opening tag and the closing tag will have a forward slash before the, the name of the tag. And Everything we want um, inside of this tag, we put in the middle. I'm going to press enter and it creates some space. So we always start our websites with HTML, the HTML tag. Now, sometimes you'll see a website that has this tag called um, exclamation point doc type HTML. And this, I'm still learning about the significance of this tag and, and how necessary it really is, but um, I guess it's it's used for the latest version of HTML, which is called HTML5, and it kind of tells the website that this is an HTML5 file. But I've had no problems with just using an HTML tag, and because that's the simplest way to do it, I'm, I'm going to show you that way. So we want to write our HTML tag. And uh, and what you saw there when we typed HTML, this is called IntelliSense. This is a thing, a feature in VS Code where it suggests stuff you might want to use. So when we typed typed HTML, um, we got this hint for this HTML, and and when you press Tab, it selected it and it created these tags. Now you can of course write these manually. You know, you can type the carrots, write HTML, and, and it when you press the closing carrot, it will actually create a closing tag for you. 
but I think the easiest way is to use IntelliSense. So I'm going to show you that way. So inside your HTML file, there are two sections, the head and the body. The head is for certain information about the website, like um, the title that you see on the tab. You know, for example, if we come here, right here where it says new tab, that information is inside of the head. Now, most of the stuff for your website is in the body, the body of the website. So we want to create two sections, the head and the body. So we can do that simply by typing head and pressing tab again. And then below the head, we'll type body. So now I've got a head tag and a body tag. And remember, this is an opening tag and this is a closing tag. And you know it's a closing tag because of the slash. Okay. Now, because this is a new tutorial series, please, please, please put your comments below. Tell me what I can do better. I feel like I've already been a little all over the place and I apologize for that. So I want to start really focusing now. Please let me know what I can do better because this course is for you guys. I want to help you to program because web programming is so much fun. I love it. Um, I really do. So please help me to know what I can do better so that I can create better videos for you. So we're going to keep this as simple as possible. Um, inside of our head tag, create a title tag just by typing title, pressing tab. So title is what you see in, in the top tab. So I'm just going to say new website. Okay. And in the body, we're going to put what's called a paragraph tag or just the letter P. And this is what it sounds like. It's a paragraph or just a chunk of text. And we're just going to say, hello world. Now I'm going to press control S to save this file. Okay. Now there's a couple ways to view this. I'm going to show you two ways to view it just so you know how. Uh, the first way is if we go into our project folder, you'll see that this is already an associate, it's already associated with Chrome because HTML files are web pages and they run in your browser. So if I double click this, you can see that it, it opened in Chrome and it says new website at the top, like we told it to, and it says hello world right here. And that's it. You've just created a website like legitimately. You could put this on the internet and it would be a full website. Now it's not a very great one, but I want you to realize that you are a programmer. You just programmed. Okay. No matter what other people might tell you, if you are practicing this, if you're trying this, that makes you a programmer. So call yourself what you are and what you want to become. Okay. So it says, hello world. That's great. Um, but what's going to happen is every time we make a change, for example, if I put an exclamation point here, you'll see it didn't change automatically. And even when I save the file, it didn't change. What we have to do is refresh the page to show the changes. Now, there's an easier way to do this where you don't have to refresh the page every time. And VS Code is going to help us do that. So if you go to your extensions button right here, there's an extension I want you to search for. Uh, let me find it. Oh. Is this? No, sorry. Uh, that is the wrong one. Oh, oh, oh. It's called, I believe it's Live Server. Yep. So in your extensions, search for Live Server. It looks like this. There will be a little install button. You just click that and it might ask you to, to, it'll say like reload required. You just click on that and it'll refresh the program and you'll have this little extension called live server. Let me show you what this does. Um, if you right click somewhere in our HTML file, you're going to see an option that says open with live server and stop live server. If we open with live server, 
it's going to open our page in the internet, in our web browser. And every time we make a change and save it, for example, if I add another paragraph tag and I say, cats are cool. As soon as I hit save, it automatically refreshes the page. Okay, which is awesome. So this is called live server. It's super useful. Now, um, usually I'll just right click, but occasionally uh, a button will show up in the bottom. I don't know why it, it doesn't always show up, but it, if you see this in the bottom, it'll say go live. And if you just click that, it'll do the same thing I just did where it opens the website. And if you want it to stop running, then you just click it again to close the, the server, okay? Um, but we want ours, we want ours to run so that we can see our changes in real time. Okay. Now there's a lot of different tags that you can use in HTML to do different things, but you don't need to memorize all of them. You just need to learn, uh, some of the important ones and you can easily look up the other ones that you want to know later. So let's do something cool let's change the color of some text okay so i'm going to get rid of all of this i'm going to create a new paragraph tag and i'm going to say this sentence sentence how do you spell sentence 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 okay it has an e I always get that word confused. Ha ha. This sentence is blue. Let's save it. Now you can see that sentence is clearly not blue. But we're going to change that. Now what we can do is we can add what's called an attribute to our HTML tag. An attribute just kind of gives a little more information um, to the tag. It gives it some instructions. So if we, if we put a space after the P inside of the carrots and we say style and then just press tab, it's, you'll see that it created this syntax. Um, the styling is everything about how the website looks. Okay. So let's say we, we want to change it to blue. Let's type color. And here you can just press tab because it's suggesting stuff to you and you can say blue. Now let's take a look at the syntax or the kind of the, the code that it used. So what we did is we had color colon and then we did a space and then we typed in blue and we put a semicolon and this was all inside of quotation marks. Okay, so this tells the sent this tells the P tag, the paragraph tag, to make the text blue. Now let's hit save. And you can see it has changed our sentence to blue. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to copy all of this, control C, and paste it here. Let's do one that's green. So this sentence is green. Let's change this to green and hit save. Now it says this sentence is green. Now you'll notice that when my mouse was hovering over the word green, it brought up a color picker. This is an awesome feature of VS Code where you can choose whatever color you want and it will figure out the RGB coordinates, I guess, or how much, you know, red, green, and blue to make that color. And this is the syntax for that, RGB, and then red, green, and blue in parentheses, separated by commas. So it's kind of nice, but it's also really nice that you can spell out the names of colors. And you'll notice there are a lot of color names. For example, if we just type in B, you'll see that we've got beige, bisque, black. You know, we've got all these different colors. Or if we type in A, Azure, Aqua, Alice Blue, you know, like there are so many, Teal, like it, it, there's a lot that you can just write out. 
There are other ways you can define colors, for example, how we did it with the RGB, but I think it's nice to just say, you know, make this yellow or make it blue. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna stop the video here and I want you to practice on your own just making these P tags and changing the colors. Just mess around with that and have some fun. Um, you know, I've given you a lot of information, so please ask questions. Please, please ask questions because I want to help you understand. Okay, I'm here for you. I wanna be your teacher. So ask your questions, mess around with the code, and in the next video, we'll do some more cool stuff, okay? And I know that this seems a little boring right now, like, you know, changing the sentence color to blue. But prom I promise, we're gonna get into some cool, fun stuff soon. So, just wait. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider subscribing. Give this video a like. Um, it'll help the channel out so that I can produce more videos like this for you. And share it with your friends um, who want to learn web design. And until next time, see you guys later.